This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at solubility and intermolecular forces. So we'll start by looking at polar and non-polar solvents. A polar solvent is a liquid composed of polar molecules, and a non-polar solvent is a liquid composed of non-polar molecules. In this table, we have some examples of polar solvents on the left and non-polar solvents on the right. Polar solvents include water, methanol, ethanol, propanone, and ethanoic acid. Non-polar solvents include hexane, octane, benzene, methylbenzene, and carbon tetrachloride. Polar substances are soluble in polar solvents, which means that they are miscible. Non-polar substances are soluble in non-polar solvents. The phrase like dissolves like is useful to remember. So here's a couple of examples. Hexane is soluble in octane because they are both non-polar. Methanol is soluble in water because they are both polar. So the phrase like dissolves like means that polar substances are soluble in polar solvents and non-polar substances are soluble in non-polar solvents. Water is known as the universal solvent because of its ability to dissolve so many different substances. For example, ionic compounds such as sodium chloride and many organic compounds such as alcohols and carboxylic acids. So next we look at different types of intermolecular forces. The first type of intermolecular force we look at is ion dipole forces. Ion dipole forces occur between water molecules and ions in aqueous solutions. When an ionic compound dissolves in water, ion dipole forces occur between the ions and the oppositely charged dipoles of the water molecules. The water molecules surround the ion, forming a hydration shell. On the left, we can see a diagram of a sodium ion surrounded by water molecules. The negative dipoles of the water molecules are attracted to the positive charge of the sodium ion. The attractions between the negative dipoles and the positive ion are ion dipole forces. In this example, the sodium ion is surrounded by six water molecules. This is called a hydration shell. If the ion has a negative charge, it's attracted to the positive dipoles of the water molecules. So ion dipole forces occur between positive and negative ions and the negative and positive dipoles of the water molecules. Next we look at hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds occur between water molecules and polar molecules such as alcohols. For example, methanol is soluble in water because it is able to form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. On the left, we can see a diagram of the hydrogen bonds between a molecule of methanol and a molecule of water. One hydrogen bond occurs between the hydrogen atom on the water molecule and the oxygen atom on the methanol molecule. A second hydrogen bond occurs between the hydrogen atom on the methanol molecule and the oxygen atom on the water molecule. Ammonia, whose Lewis structure we can see on the right, is also able to form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. Therefore, ammonia is soluble in water. The last type of intermolecular forces we look at are London dispersion forces. London dispersion forces occur between non-polar molecules. Here we have two examples of non-polar molecules. On the left, we have hexane. On the right, we have a triglyceride. Triglycerides are also known as fats or oils. So hexane, a non-polar molecule, is soluble in oil which is also non-polar. When hexane dissolves in oil, London dispersion forces occur between hexane molecules and triglyceride molecules. However, hexane is insoluble in polar solvents, such as water and alcohols. So let's end with a summary. Most ionic compounds are soluble in water because of its polar nature, forming ion dipole forces. Polar substances such as alcohols are soluble in water because they are able to form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. Non-polar substances are soluble in non-polar solvents. For example, oil and hexane are miscible. This is because of the London dispersion forces that occur between the molecules.